So, light or any form of radiation, remember, acts in two ways. It acts as bundles of energy, which we call photons, but then when it travels, it travels in the form of the wave, right? So imagine if you, I forgot to bring my lamp in here. I meant to put a lamp here on the desk. So imagine I put a lamp here, a desk lamp on the desk, and I turn it on. And as soon as I turn it on, the light from that lamp begins to radiate outward, right? So it begins to spread out and fill the room. Now it does it really quickly, right? Because we know that light travels at the speed of light, which is really fast, right? So when I do turn that lamp on, it goes really, really fast. But as it travels out, so we turn the lamp on, and let's say that that light, that light is traveling across the room. As that energy travels across the room, it travels in the form of a wave. Now, this is a very exaggerated example, but it does travel in the form of a wave, not unlike the water in the ocean traveling in the form of a wave. All radiation does that. It doesn't matter if it's infrared radiation or ultraviolet radiation. All radiation travels in the form of a wave, right? This up and down. All radiation does that, right? Now, there are lots of different types of radiation, which we named. Here is an example of a spectrum. When we talk about the spectrum of radiation, we talk about all the different types of radiation. And we named all of them, right? We named that there's cosmic radiation, X, oh, sorry, gamma radiation, X-ray radiation, as we move up, we have ultraviolet, visible light, infrared, and then we move up into the broadcast region, the, the radio waves. That's the spectrum, all the different types of radiation. Okay. Now, if we look at this spectrum, notice that visible light, how much of an area of that whole spectrum does visible light take up? Just a, a teeny tiny amount. Right? Just a teeny tiny amount. Right? And again, visible light is the only kind of radiation we can actually see. Now, lots of this radiation could be extremely harmful to us, by the way. Ultraviolet, gamma, x-ray, cosmic radiation can kill us. Right? We know ultraviolet can. Right? What, we're constantly hearing cautions to, if you go outside in the sun, you're supposed to do what? Put on sunscreen, wear a hat, right? Because if you don't, if you're exposed to too much ultraviolet, you're going to get what? Skin cancer. Skin cancer, exactly right. You get darker. You do get darker. That's true. All people do get darker, right? That's because there's melanin pigment in our skin that when it's exposed to ultraviolet, it does darken. That happens to all of us, exactly right. If you expose too much to ultraviolet, that radiation, if it interacts with the cells in our skin, can cause mutations to the DNA within those cells. What is cancer, by the way? Cancer, for the most part, in simplest terms, cancer is cells that are dividing and replicating in abnormal ways. And what causes a cell to divide and replicate? It's DNA, right? Yeah, so inside the cells of our body, there's DNA, found within the nucleus of the cell. And that DNA is a set of instructions telling the body what to do, including how to make more skin cells or bone cells or hair cells. Well, if the instructions on how to make more whatever gets screwed up, what ends up happening is you have some cells that just start running around. That's what cancer is. So if you have a cell where the DNA becomes mutated or changed, sometimes that mutation can cause it to just run them up. When you're exposed to certain types of radiation, that radiation could possibly mutate the DNA within that cell, causing that cancer. So if you're exposing your skin to lots of UV radiation, it can cause mutations in the DNA of the cells, which can then cause skin cancer. Right? Okay. What is the main difference between one type of radiation, visible light, which we can see, and some of these other types of radiation. What is the main difference between these types of radiation? And we said all radiation kind of looks and behaves the same way, right? Remember our desk lamp example? Turn the lamp on, it produces radiation, that radiation travels in the form of a wave. If I had a lamp that was not a visible light lamp, let's say I had a gamma radiation lamp, I turned it on, 
The radiation would do the same thing. It would radiate outwards, and it would travel across the room in the form of the wave. So what's the difference between visible light and gamma radiation? It's their wavelength. Wavelength. So let's talk about wavelength for a moment, right? Wavelength is, remember, if the, if the, the wave is traveling across the room, <coughs> wavelength would be a measurement of the distance from the top of one peak to the top of the next peak. That distance would be wavelength. So wavelength is the distance between each wave. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. Are some radiations stronger than others? More energetic. And I'm going to talk about that in a second, Dale. That's a good question. I promise I'm going to answer that for you. All radiation does this. All radiation travels in the form of wave. The only difference between one type of radiation and another type of radiation is wavelength. Visible light, if we were to measure the distance between each wave, that wavelength, is between about 400 nanometers and about 750 nanometers. The distance. We were measuring it. Yeah, so 750 nanometers on the long end, on the short end, around 400 nanometers. So if I were using a ruler, and by the way, the waves are so teeny tiny, I'd be yeah. using a ruler like this. But if I had a ruler small enough to measure them, the shortest visible light wavelengths, which make up the color blue, are around 400 nanometers. The longest visible light wavelengths, which are the color red, are around 700, 720 nanometers. <laughs> Nano is a metric prefix. It means a fraction of a meter, and I'll talk more about it in a little bit. <coughs> okay, so, well, I'm going to hold it off for just one second. Yeah, I promise I'm going to come back to it, okay? Let me finish this thought, and then I'm going to come back to the metric prefix, because we do need to have that conversation. So, visible light. The wavelengths, the distance between each wave, is somewhere between either 400 nanometers or on the long end, 700 nanometers. So far, so good? What about gamma radiation? That's really harmful radiation, and there's a reason for it. The reason gamma radiation is so harmful is if you were to measure, remember, all the radiation travels in the form of a wave. Gamma radiation, let's imagine visible light, let's say it's like this, kind of meandering. Gamma radiation would be like what? Up down, up down, up down, up down, up down, up down, up down. It's very, very short. The distance between each wave is very, very short. It's very short wavelength, which also makes it very high energy, which also means that if it impacts your body, because it's very high energy and very short wavelength, it can plow straight through your body. Think about like think about it like an energy bullet that just slams through your body, doing damage as it does as it goes through. Because it can penetrate further through your body, and because it has higher energy levels, it's more likely to cause the mutations that cause things like cancer. That's why <coughs> even small amounts of gamma radiation can be very harmful. But it's also why, as we mentioned earlier, gamma radiation can be used to treat cancer because if we zap cancer tumors with gamma radiation, that very high energy radiation will actually kill the tumor. We have to keep it very focused, though. So far, so good. Radiation that's not nearly as harmful is ones that are really, really long. What is the longest? of the electromagnetic radiation waves. If we go back to that spectrum, remember what it was? It was the radium, yeah, the broadcast waves. Remember, so visible lights like this, right? The gamma radiation is up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Radio is long and very spread apart. 
which means <coughs> it's not very low energy. It also means that very long wavelength, and it's less likely to cause physical damage. So far, so good. <coughs> it's less likely, so it's not impossible. Not impossible, exactly right. All radiation has the potential to cause damage. Again, it depends on energy level. So the higher the energy level, the lower the dosage necessary to cause harm. The lower the energy level, the much higher the concentration of dosage would need to be to cause harm. Right. Now, <coughs> let's go back to our spectrum of different types of radiation. All right. So to talk about a couple of these really quick, we kind of have to drive home this concept. My favorite radiation up here is gamma radiation. Can anyone tell me why gamma radiation is my favorite? Because it's cool. Why is it cool? Cause, well, because I'm a comic book <laughs> nerd, that's exactly why. All right? And if you love the comic books, if you love the superhero universe, gamma radiation is associated in particular with one of my favorite Marvel superheroes, which is the Incredible Hulk. Right? <coughs> so if you're familiar with the Incredible Hulk, the story of how Dr. Bruce Banner becomes the Incredible Hulk, he is a research scientist, right, that is experimenting with uh, gamma radiation. In particular, ways to actually protect soldiers against gamma radiation. He inadvertently becomes exposed to massive amounts of gamma radiation as part of his research, and in the comic books, that exposure turns Dr. Bruce Banner into the Incredible Hulk. Right? So, gamma radiation in the comics is awesome, because in the comic books, gamma radiation turns you into the Incredible Hulk. In real life, if you were exposed to gamma radiation, it turns you into a dead person. Exactly right. Right. <laughs> Now, why again is gamma radiation so harmful? Because it's very short wavelength and very high energy, right? Another one of my favorite types of radiation, again, because of the comic books, is cosmic radiation. Cosmic radiation. I love cosmic radiation. What what group of superheroes were exposed to cosmic radiation? You know, the Fantastic Four. Exactly. Right. Another group of Marvel superheroes. I'm, by the way, I'm more of a Marvel guy than a DC guy. But, um, <laughs> We'll talk about we'll talk about both. We will talk about both. I'll talk about Superman a little bit too. Um, but the Fantastic Four, right? So Sue Storm, right? Uh, Reed Richards, uh, Ben. Who's Ben Black? I forgot. I don't know Ben. I know. Um, yeah. So we have <coughs> Ben, right? Who's Ben? Whoever his name was. At any rate, if you know the, the background story of the Fantastic Four, these are four scientists. Which, by the way, the Fantastic Four are probably my favorites simply because they are scientists that became superheroes, which is also why The Incredible Hulk is one of my favorites, because he was a scientist that became a superhero. By the way, that's why Marvel's cooler, in my opinion, than DC. Because it's, <laughs> it's like nerdy, dorky guys that became superheroes, right? At any rate, the Fantastic Four, four scientists that go into space to conduct experiments. And while they're conducting their experiments, there is a, an explosion on the surface of the sun, which produces a flare of radiation in particular, cosmic radiation. As this cosmic radiation is racing across the galaxy, or rather through our solar system, as this cosmic radiation slams into their spaceship, they are exposed to this cosmic radiation. This cosmic radiation causes mutations to their genetic makeup, which causes them to turn into, uh, you know, Mr. Or the Mr. Fantastic, or the Invisible Woman, you know, the Human Torch, and the Thing, right? Again, in the comic books, cosmic radiation turns you into a superhero. In reality, cosmic radiation turns you into a dead person. Exactly right. Cosmic radiation, by the way, in terms of list here, it's listed on the bottom, but actually shot probably should be listed on the top because it's the most dangerous. Why is it the most dangerous? It's the one that's the shortest wavelength, and it has the highest energy level, which they can do some serious damage. Now, here's my question to you guys. Use some critical thinking skills for a moment. Space, space is full of cosmic radiation. The stars that make up our galaxy are constantly emitting cosmic radiation. Okay, so far so good. So space is full of cosmic radiation. 
we live on the surface of the earth, which happens to be in space, right? So we're in space. We're on earth, which is in space. Space is full of cosmic radiation. Cosmic radiation, if we are exposed to it, will kill us. So my question to you is, if we are on Earth, and Earth is in space, and space is full of cosmic radiation, why are we not dead? <laughs> okay, so, so Joanna says that surrounding our Earth, there is this magnetic field. We call it the magnetosphere. Right, that's true. So the fact that we have a liquid molten core to our planet produces a magnetic sphere. We have pole, we want pole south pole. Now, what does that magnetic sphere provide for us, Joanna, we think? You are right, by the way. What does it act as? Let's use a photograph term. That magnetic sphere is blocking that cosmic radiation from getting to the surface. Because we're here on the surface. Not the shutter. Not aperture. Not aperture. Something else. In photography, sometimes we like to block some of the radiation. Filter. Exactly right. The magnetosphere that surrounds our planet acts as a filter. So what is a filter? Write this in your notes, you guys. What is a filter? A filter in photography. I'm going to give you a photography definition of filter, right? Because in a copy filter, right, that, that, that filters out the grains and lets the, the water come through. So filters block some things and let some things come through, right? That's kind of what a filter does. But let's talk about filters in terms of photography. What does a filter do when it comes to photography? Filters block a portion of the electro electromagnetic spectrum. Filters block a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. So they let some come through, and then they block others. Filters block a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. So they block some of the radiation, but they let others come through. So let's think about this magnetosphere. When the radiation hits it, that magnetosphere is blocking the cosmic radiation. It doesn't let it come down to the surface, because if it didn't, we'd all be dead. It would boil off our oceans, and there would be no liquid water. No, not continents, but that's why some planets are, because they don't have a magnetosphere. All right? I'll get your question in just a second, Dale, I promise. Let me go over this concept, and I promise to get your question. So what happens is this magnetosphere that surrounds our planet, it blocks some radiation, right? So it blocks the cosmic radiation. It also blocks the gamma radiation. Does it let some come through? Yeah, what light, what comes through instead? Light. The light. <laughs> UV comes through. Not all of it. Visible light comes through. Infrared comes through, right? That's what keeps our, we have some infrared that makes it through. That's why our, our planet gets the heat that it needs. Visible light, that's why when the sun comes out, right? When our Earth rotates and, and our side of the planet's facing the sun, we can see that light. UV comes through. But it blocks, especially those short wavelengths. If we did not have this barrier, life would not exist on our planet. We have another barrier that surrounds our planet that also acts as a filter, the ozone layer. What does the ozone layer filter? Not heat. The ozone layer filters UV, ultraviolet. If we didn't have the ozone layer, which, because there is some UV that makes it through. We talked about the fact that we can get a suntan, right? So some UV comes through, but not all of it. A lot of it is blocked by the ozone layer. If we had no ozone layer surrounding the planet, all of the UV would bombard our planet's surface, and we would probably all die from skin cancer in probably less than a decade, right? <laughs> blocking, <laughs> blocking a portion of the spectrum is the job of a filter, right? In cameras, we use filters all the time, right? So I, if I wanted to block a particular color, I could put a filter on the front of my camera <coughs> and block everything but the green. This is a green filter, right? Or if I have this filter, here's a blue filter. If I put this on the front of the camera, the only thing coming through would be the blue light, right? So there are filters that block particular colors. 
Some filters, like this one, this one's clear, it's still a filter. It blocks a different wavelength. It might block ultraviolet radiation, or it might block infrared radiation. And most filters are going to screw typically, normally they're round like this one. They're going to usually screw right on the front of your lens, right? In fact, if you look at the front of your camera, if you look at the front of your lens, if you take the lens cap off, you might notice on the inside of your lens there are some threads where you would screw your filter onto the front. So you can see it's not 